Some brain injuries are easy to detect, such as obvious swelling or bleeding within the brain itself. Doctors know pretty well what's going on there. However, the less severe, the moderate or mild brain injuries, or what we call TBI, traumatic brain injuries, are more difficult to detect oftentimes. They don't show up readily on an MRI or a CT scan uh, or even an X-ray or any other type of imaging. So we have to look for the signs and symptoms associated with a classic TBI, mild or moderate. Some of those symptoms can be as simple as, uh, as, simple as forgetfulness, as difficulty speaking, as word searching. You can't quite get the right word. It's like uh, knowing someone's name, but it's at the tip of your tongue, and you just can't quite get it. Those are common signs of, of brain injury. In addition to that, you can have uh, severe fatigue. You're tired all the time. It's difficult to get out of bed. Uh, we often see depression, some anxiety, but usually depression associated with traumatic brain injury, um, difficulty speaking, things of that nature. In addition to that, there's other signs that a, a neurologist or a doctor can pick up on to identify quite readily a brain injury that's, that's occurring and still affecting the patient. Here we see a gentleman who had recently had a brain injury, and you'll notice that his right pupil is quite a bit larger than his left pupil. And this is a classic sign that neurologists uh, would look for to determine whether or not uh, there's a brain injury present. Here there's dif difficulty with the brain uh, differentiating the level of light between the two eyes and regulating proper pupil size, and that's a classic sign of, of a brain injury. Other difficulties with brain injuries uh, can include uh, what's called photophobia. The bright lights uh, really affect your eyes, and, and you, you're, you're avoiding light, avoiding going into bright sunlight or, or being under fluorescent bulbs, things of that nature. But the most frustrating difficulty with a brain injury would be the cognitive uh, deficits, at least according to, to, to my clients. And that, that really is the difficulty that people have with uh, understanding uh, spoken language, uh, understanding body language, being able to understand mathematical concepts and really live life the, the way they once were. I've had bookkeepers uh, who have been bookkeepers their entire life uh, become brain injured and be un unable to do math. I mean, it, it, it can really be that difficult. They speak normally, they seem normal, but their math skills are completely kaput. So these are the types of cognitive deficits that can occur uh, in a brain injury. And usually the way we pick those out and figure out what really is related versus what maybe isn't related or related to other factors would be to submit uh, our client to what's called neuropsychological testing, where a neuropsychologist, someone who's trained in neurology and psychology, would administer standardized tests, uh, would, uh, would interview the client, would look at prior medical records and subsequent medical records to determine what exactly their neurological and cognitive difficulties are and whether it's related to their brain injury versus other factors.